What's the excitement level? Very high, extremely high, top five high. My name is Derek Salman, and I love fish, all different kinds, big and small. I'm on a quest to learn about all the unique species that are out there, so come join me on Badgerland Fishes. I'm at St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge in Mississippi, which helps to preserve 24,589 acres of land and was created in 1990. This area conserves dynamic bottomland hardwood forests and other habitats, and also benefits the animals that live there, including a unique species of long-lived fish, the alligator gar. Today I'm here with researchers from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as well as the Nichols State University Gar Lab. The current lab includes principal investigator and known gar enthusiast Solomon David and graduate students Dinah Kador, Audrey Bates, and myself. Our goal today is to capture and tag some of the large alligator gar that are residing in a restricted area of deep water known as the Blue Hole. During low water, gar congregate in this area until the floodwaters come, allowing them to expand their feeding range and to spawn in the shallow areas of the refuge. As we arrived, we could immediately see large gar breaching, getting us excited about what we might find. Wow! Oh yeah, they'll be rolling out. Oh my Holy gosh! Cow. So this is, there was a big one! Yeah. They're all big. <laughs> Along with breathing through their gills, gars also possess the ability to breathe air, allowing them to live in oxygen-depleted environments where other fish may not be able to survive. This breathing is quite noticeable from on land, which can be an indicator of gar are present in an area or not. While watching the gars breach, Kayla Kimmel from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service gave us the rundown about the best way to catch these giant fish. So we'll go ahead and get a net out. Um and get that set while we get all the equipment set up. Okay. And then as soon as, I mean, I, I don't want to let them sit in there. It's 80 degrees today. So as soon yeah. as one starts splashing, we'll go get it. Okay. And pull it out, bring it back to the bank, let whoever's there start working it up. And it'll be a, probably constant. Okay. Once that starts, it's like okay. it's on. So it'll be constant of um, doing that so we don't let fish sit in the net. Yeah. I'm assuming we'll know if one swims in. For the most part, you you will. Sometimes they will get at the bottom and you won't know. Um, so over, no matter what, we'll check them within a certain amount of time. Gator heads. Little gator yeah, heads. so there's gator. There's some gator in here too. It's not uncommon that a gator will get in our gill net, potentially. Um, so if that happens, we'll work through that when that happens. After launching the boat, Kayla, Audrey, and Dinah went out to set our gill net. The gill net has a lead line on the bottom of it and a float line at the top. Floats are added to the float line and weights are added to the lead line. This ensures that the net covers as much area as possible from the bottom to the top of the water column. When the gars run into the net, they can become tangled, and then brought into the boat. The rest of us enjoyed the wildlife we saw from shore while waiting, but it didn't take long to catch our first gar. It's like a whale. Oh, it's mad. <laughs> it's probably not going to be very tired either, because it just got in there. Wow. In just the first net set, we caught four gar to work up on shore. Once they were brought back to land, the entire team got our first close up looks at these magnificent beasts. A towel is placed over the gar's eyes to keep it calm while we collect our data. Each gar is weighed, multiple measurements are taken, and a fin clip from the caudal fin is also obtained. Every gar is also scanned for a pit tag, and if they don't have one, we inject them with a new one, as well as a floy tag. The pit tag allows each gar to get a unique ID and allows their data to be linked to an individual fish. If the gar is caught and scanned again, researchers can learn information about where the fish has been and how it has changed over time. The tag is the same kind that is used to microchip cats and dogs. The Floyd tag also has a code on it and is more obvious. This can be reported if the gar is ever caught again without needing to be scanned. It's 
someone watch that one, make sure it's doing good. Someone clear. I'm gonna say, keep letting it down, letting it down, letting it down. It's down. 75. 75. After processing, the gar is ready to be released. All right, girl. Bye, Katie. There we go. There we go. Thanks for the water. Oh, nice job, everyone. After processing our first four gar, we reset the net and brought even more fish in. Uh, 203. Okay, head length. I'm gonna pull it down this way. Thanks for the engineer. That's the best we got. Yeah, 60. She knows right. where to Let's go. Get some mail back. Oh, yeah, Carter head. Scooter. All right. And then scooter. Okay. Two. Scoot, scoot, scoot. There you go. Here's what to do. All right. There you go. All right, let's go put net out. Well, today has been absolutely incredible so far. Probably one of my favorite days in the field. We've been seeing some huge gator gar. When you get into, uh, we take measurements. Um, we're also taking a fin clip to do some chemical analysis. And we also put in a pit tag, which is a little transmitter. So if it's found again and somebody has a reader, they can say uh, which fish it was and they can get the information. We had one fish that was recaptured. So it was tagged in the past and we caught it again. So we can get information on that fish. Also adding a Floyd tag, a little orange one with a number. It's a little more visible. So if like fishermen catch it, they can read the tag number and stuff like that. And then we've also been getting a weight, um, just collecting a ton of data. It's amazing to see these huge prehistoric fish and to be able to work with them. I did get slapped um, by one's tail, so I got a little, got a little souvenir. But uh, really amazing. Uh, this is an incredible place, this blue hole here. Throughout the day, we switched out our crew on the boat, which also provided a unique and awesome experience. Nice. Right in front. Perfect time. <laughs> they hold down and they hold. And then, Whoa. And that's where they'll keep their babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The net oh. curtain. Just the make net. a. Yep. Wrap it underneath. Yep. So we're going to use this as a gurney. I got my head. And. <laughs> Look at that. God, that was so smooth. And if you want to just. Pull it under. Yeah. That would be. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'll lift her. All right. Hand it. There you go. Just watch the fins when you pull okay. it. Okay. Much. Oh, All right. There we go. Maybe a lot more. Oh, I think it's that way. All right. I'm going to walk. Three. Three. Shots. Yep, she's ready to go. Yeah, good. Okay. Right, we're gonna release this alligator gar. We caught, did some measurements, got a weight, uh, did some tagging. Not one of the biggest ones we've seen, but a beautiful fish, so we're gonna get it back in the water. Alright, yep. There we go. What's the excitement level for the day, Solomon? What's that? What's the excitement level? Very high. Extremely high. Top five high. <laughs> <laughs> we got 15 gar total. Um, just pulled our last one out. Was a, was a big one. So really incredible day here. Super uh, excited that Fish and Wildlife let us come and gather some data here on their alligator gar. By the end of our trip, we caught, measured, weighed, clipped, and tagged 15 large alligator gar. The largest being about seven and a half feet long and weighing over 150 pounds. St. Catherine Creek National Wildlife Refuge is an amazing place that protects needed habitat for these prehistoric giants. We're hopeful that our data can provide information on these charismatic species and why they do so well at the refuge. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Fishes. How many would you say are in here? I don't know. <laughs> I've seen two so far. Yeah, I've seen a bunch. <laughs> so we know at least two, right? It's like a pig rolling around in the mud. Wow.